All right, welcome to Let's Hang Out, Do You Mind If We Paint? Excuse me, Let's Hang Out, Do You Mind If I Paint? My name's Dan. We are mid-lessons here in our student section, and we have arrived here at the mountains. We're going to put in some footy hills. I've switched the camera back to the right-hand side. Believe it or not, that was exceedingly difficult to have it on my left side while I was trying to look that way and paint. So I'm going to be very conscious of keeping my hand position out of the way so you can see real well. And footy hills are super, super easy to do. So I don't think this will be a long uh, segment here in the video. So I'm just going to load with a little bit of the highlight color that I made for the mountains. It's, it's super, super light. It's too light for what I want to do. And I'm just going to load it, just pulling in some through on both sides. I just want the lighter color on first. And then I'm going to go into some of my blue and some of that mountain mix may turn a little gray on me. That's fine. I just don't want it to be the lightest color, or the, excuse me, the darkest color I can make on my palette. Because these are way far off in the distance, footy hills. So I've got some pulled in. And then the last stroke is important in loading the brush. You just want to push into your paint. Push into your paint. You should start seeing a little ridge happening right up there. That means you've got it on your brush too. So if you want your footy hills to kind of, I don't know, let's have them wind up down right about here. I'm just going to leave with the corner and push gently and see what I'm getting. Yeah, that's going to do. So now I'm just going to push gently, still leading with that corner, let more of my brush touch a couple of important things. I'm keeping some of that misty area behind this row of trees that we worked so hard tapping in there with that extra cloud bit on the last video. And we're just going to let these little, little trees run. Well, let's just let them run out to about here. We'll cover up most of the rest of this with some big things here in the front. So I'm not too worried about that. So I'm just going to tap gently, almost the same idea as putting mist at the bottom of the mountain. I just want it to be super, super light down here because we're going to have another row of footy hills coming in. Real quick, I'm just going to wipe the excess paint out of my brush. You see me do that a lot. Bob would often clean the brush entirely with paint thinner and then sling the excess off in a bucket and beat the devil out of the brush. While he is absolutely right, that is terrifically fun to do. It can really slow you down, and I like to keep on rolling. So I often operate with a brush that's got some love and experience in it. I'm just careful not to have it put new paint on the canvas. So now this stroke is just a little straight up, tiny little stroke varying in height just to bump up the tops of some of the thicker paint I left right when we first touched the canvas. Don't go over these too, too many times. You really just want to do it once, maybe twice at most. And don't make them too crazy, crazy tall. They're just too far away. You just want the indication. You might even win Arborist of the Year in your area because you just planted about 100,000 trees over there on the far side of this lake. How cool is that? So let's load the brush again. We'll get a little darker than we were before. Still just black and blue. I've still got some white on my brush. That's totally fine. So I'll go back through this white-blue pile of mess we got left down here. I still just don't want it to be the darkest, darkest, dark it can be. I'm just thinking about having one more uh, row of trees here. So I'm going to start tapping with that corner again. I'm going to leave a little bit of this lighter area. We'll address that in a second. I just want to kind of have this roll off the canvas this way. And we'll just kind of fill this in. I'm going to grab a little more paint using a little bit more of the mountain mix, so it's just a little bit darker. It's getting a little bit closer to us on this part of our little body of water, and that's going to be real subtle. We're not going to see that tremendously. So there, that's really all we're going to need to do on that. Let's bump up a few of these little trees ever so gently. Go as straight up as you can. If you had too much coffee this morning or you got a little wiggle in your hand anyway, that's all right. It may just look like a strong windstorm's gone through part of your little valley here. If that happens, just kind of roll with it. You'll be all right. Still got that same dirty brush. Let's just gently pull in a little reflection because this will be water to us across our little body of water here. 
probably wouldn't be able to see all of this reflection, all of this shoreline. So I'm going to leave that as it is. And as I get further and closer to us, I'm just pulling a little further down. Wipe off any extra and ever so gently, ever so gently, just go across, just go across, just to give it a watery feel. And there, my friends, you have instant reflections on the far side of your lake. Let me do one more thing for you to really set off those footy hills, and that'll be the end of this video. We'll move on to the next one, which is going to be some great bushy things and trees and such on this side of the lake. I just grabbed some liquid white out of the jar, same jar we put liquid white on first with. I've given it a good smush, so it's very, very flat here on my palette, and I am just going to go across it in kind of a curve so I get that little roll of paint right out there on the top side of the knife this time. I'm going to just come in and decide where my shoreline is going to be on this far side of the, the body of water here and just saw some in. I won't do this straight across. The lines are going to be horizontal, but I'm not going straight across all my trees. I'm going to kind of move around a little bit, do this in a couple of steps. If it's too bright in some places, I'm just going to come back and rub over that a little bit. So we'll just, it'll still get absorbed by the canvas there, but keep these strokes horizontal. Otherwise your water's going to look like it's running right off your canvas. You can switch and pick it up on the bottom side of the knife if you just want to try it a different way. I'd suggest to you trying it both ways, the top and the bottom of the knife, and just do what works best for you. It's not right or wrong. I just want to help you with the technique and getting the paint on the utensil, and then go for it, man. Get that paint up on that canvas and see what happens. And just rub these down a little bit. These are so far away. You don't want a lot of detail across your pond. Maybe we've got one more little spot kind of sitting out here in the lighter zone. We might be able to just see a little bit of shoreline on. Maybe, maybe, maybe as it creeps towards this little pirate's cove over here, it's got some too. So you can see, now it feels like that goes off, off over there somewhere. Maybe we'll put just a little ripple on the water. A little jet ski went by, a little sailing boat, a little, little fish jumped. Who knows what happened over there? So there you go. Now you've got footy hills in front of the mountain. You've got a nice water line cut in, and we are ready to jump to this side of the pond. So we will do that on our next video. See you there. Let us know if you're having questions or trouble on these sections, and we'll be glad to help.